Good evening. My name is Tim Andrews, and thank you for joining Congressman Stephen Horsford's interactive telephone town hall focusing on veterans and the PACT Act. This evening's call is an opportunity to make sure every veteran and veterans advocate in Nevada knows about the very fast approaching deadline of August 9th to receive maximum PACT Act benefits. Now, this is an interactive town hall, and we look forward to answering as many of your questions as we can. Participants are dialed in as well as listening live online at horsford.house.gov slash live. Now, if you have a question you'd like to ask, you can simply press star three on your telephone keypad to ask a question. And if you're joining us online, simply type your name and question right below the streaming player. Also, I want to remind you, if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, press star six at any time during this event. We'll collect your email and make sure you get on that list. Now, you may have an opportunity to ask your question directly, so please try to make sure you don't have any loud noise in the background if you're called upon to ask your question. And again, we'll get to as many of your questions as possible during this event. But before we get started, we'd like to take a uh, for our first poll and get an idea of who's joining us on this call this evening. So the first poll question, are you one of the following? Press one if you're a veteran. Press two if you're an active duty service member. Press three if you're a family member of a veteran. Press four if you're a veteran advocate. Or press five for none of the above. And we appreciate your participation. But now let's turn things over to Congressman Stephen Horsford to lead tonight's discussion. Good evening, Congressman. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. I am Congressman Stephen Horsford, and I'm proud to represent all of you uh, in Nevada's 4th Congressional District in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, I'm also uh, want to start by thanking all of our veterans, our service members, uh, active and retired, as well as your family uh, members for all that you do to uh, protect and honor our freedoms. And that is what tonight and the, this town hall is really all about. It's all about you. Uh, as your representative, I was proud to vote uh, for the PACT Act. Uh, which is the Sergeant First Class Keith Robinson honoring our promise to address Comprehensive Toxic Act of 2022. Uh, this is legislation that is now law, and we wanted to go through it tonight and make all of you aware here about new eligibility um, benefits that are available. Uh, again, as your representative, I was proud to vote for the PACT Act last year. Uh, this law drew an association between burn pit exposure among veterans and certain ailments, including many cancers. The law makes nearly 3.5 million veterans eligible right now for the care and benefits that you have earned. Instead of forcing you to go through an onerous process of proving that your illness was related to your service. Since President Biden signed the PACT Act into law, the VA has delivered more than $1.4 billion in PACT Act benefits to our veterans. Additionally, more than 665,000 veterans have applied for PACT Act related benefits. More than 3.9 million veterans have received new toxic exposure screenings, and more than 287,000 veterans have enro enrolled in the VA healthcare as a result. So what does the PACT Act do exactly? Uh, the key provisions include uh, the fact that the PACT Act adds new presumptive conditions for radiation, Agent Orange, Gulf War toxins, and burn pit exposures. Now, the eligibility to file claims related to the PACT Act expansion of benefits and the relief associated with being granted those benefits went into effect immediately upon President Biden signing uh, the bill into law. The new classification of 23 conditions as presumptive will decrease the paperwork and processing 
that's associated with these claims and will hasten the granting of relief to our veterans. So as part of this work, I am holding a week of action on the PACT Act because there's a looming deadline coming up on August the 9th. While applications will still be accepted after August 9th, applications that are submitted by August 9th will actually be backdated to the date that the law was enacted, meaning more benefits for eligible veterans, and that's why it's important for us to be doing this telephone town hall tonight. Eligible veterans are encouraged to submit claims as soon as possible, and we have a number of resources that are on the call tonight who will walk you through uh, those resources. Veterans who were previously denied a claim that is now a presumptive condition can file a supplemental claim. Again, veterans that may have been denied in the past but are now uh, covered as a presumptive eligibility can file a supplemental claim. If a veteran previously submitted a claim for a condition that's now considered presumptive and the claim is still pending a decision, there is no action that needs to be taken by you, the veteran. The review will proceed in accordance with the new eligibility. Now, I also wanted to share with you that the PACT Act also expands VA health care. It expands the period that post 9-11 veterans have to enroll in the VA health care from five to 10 years for veterans discharged or released after October 1st of 2013. The PACT Act also creates a one year open enrollment period for veterans who already fall outside the 10 year expanded window. This is defined as veterans discharged or released before October 1st, 2013. So again, for those veterans who fall within this window, it would be from October 1st of 2022 to October 1st of 2023. The bill also authorizes 31 new VA medical and research centers in 19 states. Now my office has created a website to be a resource for eligible veterans. Uh, so if you have a pen and paper, please write this down. That website for more information is horsford.house.gov forward slash PACT Act, that's P-A-C-T-A-C-T. Again, that's horsford.house.gov forward slash PACT Act. Again, if you have any questions, please press star and the number three on your keypad uh, and we'll get you into the queue. But now I'd like to bring in our guests that are with us this evening. We are joined by local Nevada veteran leaders who can share how their organizations are supporting this process and what it means for Nevada veterans. I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Monica Rollinson Maynard from the Veterans Health Administration. She's a family medicine doctor and she works with veterans throughout Southern Nevada. Thank you, Dr. Rollinson Maynard for joining us uh, for this call. Thank you. Thank you so much for, <clears throat> excuse me, inviting our uh, VA here locally to be able to participate in this town hall. Uh, since the PACT Act was signed uh, last year, our facility has made a very uh, concerted effort to reach out to all veterans to provide them additional information and education related not only to the PACT Act, but also to our toxic exposure screening questions and to the environmental health registry questions, uh, environmental health registry programs that we have available. I'll take a brief moment to explain um, what uh, the process is as it relates to submitting a claim and discuss the differences between toxic exposure screening questions and the environmental health registry. The toxic exposure screening questions are a series of questions that are asked, asked to every veteran um, at the uh, VA. And it asks what may uh, the veteran have been exposed to while they were active duty. 
And it's not only, and it's not just related to the herbicides like Agent Orange and the burn pits. It's also thinking of anything that you may have been exposed to from an insect bite to a vaccination to um, lead, not just the uh, ones that we hear about. So every veteran should undergo that toxic exposure screening uh, questions. And it's not just a one-time thing. It, is ha it occurs every five years. Uh, those questions, though, are not necessary for you to file a claim. Those questions are intended to help help you and one of the uh, members of our team determine what are the next best steps and commit you to the appropriate resources. Um, the Environmental Health Registry Program is another program that is uh, sponsored by the VA, and we have that at our facility. The Environmental Health Registry is not a requirement to file claims either. What this is, is this is a a series of, quite, of an examination and an extensive review of medical systems to um, help to identify medical problems and to try to help to link them to the exposures that have occurred while you were active duty. It is, again, not a requirement for the uh, compensation and pension purposes, but it, does, it is something that does allow for um, the research to help to expand and add additional medical conditions to the exposures. Um, the last thing is um, if you are filing a claim that through the Veteran Benefits Administration or the VBA, um, that will generate the, begin the process in which you get a compensation and pension examination that's either done at the VA or it can be done out in the community through a contractor. And that is where the uh, level of service connection and the compensation that is associated with that. Like uh, Congressman Horsford said, um, if you are going to file a claim or do an intent to file a claim before August 9th, uh, 2023, there is the possibility for the potential back pay up to uh, 12 months from when the law was first signed. Um, another thing that we do offer at our facility is an Environmental Health and Pact Act class. Once a week, we have veterans come in and we, t we discuss all of the different uh, exposure areas. We uh, discuss the different presumptive conditions that are related to those exposures, and we do help to provide, again, those connections with uh, the next steps in filing um, in your care. So that is, um, in a nutshell, what we are doing at our VA here. In Las Vegas, um, as uh, to date, we have screened 45,000 veterans for toxic exposure screening, and we hope to um, help you if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rollinson Maynard, very much. 47,000, you said, uh, Nevadans already that have been screened. Is that correct? We are currently at 45,000 here in the Las Vegas area. That does not count what they've done up north in Reno. Great. Wonderful. Well, we definitely want uh, as many veterans as possible who, uh, you know, fall into the eligibility to uh, benefit from this uh, expanded coverage uh, under the PACT Act. It's something that we've worked hard to provide, and we want to make sure the people here in our community know about it, and that's uh, the purpose of this call tonight. So thank you, uh, Dr. Mon Monica Rollinson Maynard uh, from the Veterans Health Administration. Um, again, if you have a question, please press star and the number three uh, to be put into the queue. Um, we have staff from my office standing by to take your question and to get you in the queue. But next, I'm going to bring in Lisa uh, Masail. Uh, she is with the Veteran Advocacy Support Team at the Nevada Department of Veteran Services. She is a retired major from the U.S. Air, Forces, Air, Air Force Reserves, where she serves as a medical administration um, officer. So thank you, uh, Major, for being on and for your service in the U.S. Air Force uh, Reserves. Lisa? Hello. Thank you. Um, so this was such great information that we've already had. I just want to add a little bit about how we go forward with doing our claims in our office, and we have offices statewide all over Nevada. Um, the first thing that we have to do is we have to get authorization from a veteran or a dependent. That's one of the things um, that's often not talked about is survivors are entitled to file under the PACT Act as well. So we get the authorization 
to assist with filing the claim and review the claims file to see what has and hasn't been filed already. And because that's important because we need to ensure that we file the claim, the diagnosis on the correct form. Because if it's already been submitted, we wanna do a supplemental claim. And if it's a brand new um, claim that they've never filed for that specific diagnosis, we wanna go through the process and do the correct one. And then, you know, our survivors are being granted eligibility for dependence indemnity compensation. So if the veteran has passed away from one of these conditions from the PACT Act, we are able to then go by and help widows or their dependent children, or even in some cases, the helpless children that are over 18 years of age. Um, some of the important things that we have to do is if the veteran was not being seen at the VA Medical Center, is we need to ensure that we request those medical records from their civilian healthcare providers to prove that the veteran does have this diagnosis. Having all this information kind of upfront before um, we just randomly submit a claim just helps us and the VA get this claim done faster and it helps it go through more accurately. Um, you know, if we do things right the first time, we don't have to go through and do it again and file an appeal and all that other other stuff that nobody really wants to wait for. Um, so we have to have the diagnosis, obviously, and then we have to have that service event or the exposure, you know, whether it be from burn pits in Saudi Arabia or Agent Orange in Vietnam or one of the other areas it was added on to, such as Thailand or, or anything like that. Um, we just kind of like to go through and have all of our ducks in their own present that straight to the VA so that it's right there in front of them and there's no question. It just, like I said, makes it faster. But, you know, we have to have that nexus. We have to say that, you know, this veteran has hypertension, but did the veteran get exposed to Agent Orange or were they never deployed? So we have to put those two pieces together in order to make that connection with that presumptive condition. Um, so the intent to file right now is so extremely important because I know, you know, we, we work in the regional office in Reno, uh, myself, and we work right alongside with DAV and VFW and PVA. Um, there are other veteran organizations that have veteran service officers to help with these claims, and they are so busy right now with everybody trying to get these PACDAC claims filed, they're booked out three to four weeks. So that intent to file is so important to get that done mm -hmm. and get that submitted to ensure that those veterans or the surviving um, dependents get that retroactive payment back to last year. So I just, I just can't stress that enough. But we are here and we're in the regional office. We're helping um, people. We're taking walk-ins as we can, but as I said, we're, all of our offices are so busy. We have offices in Las Vegas and Elko, um, Pahrump, Boulder City, Sparks, Reno, Winnemucca. Um, Fallon everywhere. So we're here to answer any questions and anybody can find our information at veterans.nv.gov. And there's actually a button on there where you could submit a request to ask a VSO. You pop in some information, we'll know exactly where you're at and we'll get a veteran service officer to help you in whatever town you're in to make sure that we can get that process sped up. But um, I wouldn't delay on doing that intent to file at all. Um, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I would just like to add, um, because we have heard a lot of rumors over the last couple months, and today I actually got one um, in my inbox from another veteran organization that said the PAC Act was going to be retroactively paid to 2013. So I don't know who else had gotten that, but it's only back to August of 2022. Um, and also, you know, just because you have a diagnosis does not mean that a veteran will be rated at 100%. It obviously depends on what the diagnosis is and the severity of it. Um, hypertension is kind of that one that we're seeing right now in our Agent Orange veterans, and a majority of them have their blood pressure controlled by medication, and so they are getting a 0% rating. It doesn't mean it's not service-connected, it just means that it's not um, severe enough to be compensated for it, but there are still benefits having a 0% rating. So we're here to sit and all of, all of the VSOs across Nevada, regardless of what uh, veteran organization they're with, they are here to walk through the process of doing the claims, managing that claim from start to finish, providing updates, 
catching errors that are made because errors do get made, you know, both on the VA side, the VSO side, the veteran side, they do happen. And so we are here to help get all that stuff taken care of and cleared up so that um, we can do what we need to do for our veterans. And that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions Great. for me. Thank you so much, Lisa. And yes, before we bring on our final guests, we do want to remind callers that if you have a question, please submit uh, submit it now by pressing star and the number three on your phone pad. Uh, we will begin to take questions uh, after our next guest. And I know, uh, Lisa, we do have a number of questions already in the queue about uh, service to rural areas. You know, our congressional district covers 50,000 square miles throughout Nevada. And so we have a lot of uh, people on the phone uh, from a number of rural communities uh, specifically asking how to connect there. So um, we'll, we'll come back and get the answer to that. But next, I want to bring in um, Tomasi. Uh, is it Baremo? Is that correct? With the Veterans uh, Benefit Administration Office in Reno? Uh, it was Comisi for Waymo uh, from the, um, yes, I work for the uh, Reno VA Regional uh, Center Line Office in Las Vegas at the VA hospital. Thank you, Comisi. Go ahead and, and share the information with with our callers on the phone, on the line. Well, um, thank you for inviting me to the town hall. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Comisi, and I work for the Reno VA Regional uh, Center Line Office in Las Vegas. Uh, which is located on the first floor of the VA hospital, main building, and we're directly across from the pharmacy. Our office was created basically to um, receive veterans uh, and their benef uh, uh, benefit, uh, their dependents if they need to see somebody face-to-face. -face. Obviously, you can send letters to the VA, to the original office for your claim, but if you want to see somebody face-to-face, you can come into our office. Uh, and like I said, there's one office up there, the main office in uh, the original office in, in Reno, but we're in the satellite office located in the VA hospital on the first floor. Now, our office is located uh, open from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock every day, with the exception of a uh, federal holiday or the weekend. Uh, because of the, the number of uh, visitors that will come into our office, uh, if you want to stop by and uh, basically you need to schedule an appointment to see one of us if you want to uh, file a claim, answer any of your questions, or check the status of your claim. We also uh, know also the part of the purpose of the, uh, having this office is to accept documents. If you are, have a claim that's currently pending and you want to submit additional documents to support your claim, you can bring it over to our office and we we'll take it from you and we we add it to your uh, claim, basically send it to uh, Jamesville for you and make sure it's uploaded into the system, into your file. Uh, we also, like I said, we also uh, mail stuff for you uh, to the right place to be processed. If you have claims that for pension and you also have claims for uh, compensation, it's two different uh, mail system. So, um, so, like I said, uh, basically that is the purpose or our office is to assist veterans face-to-face, -face, answer questions, make sure that they understand what the law, like especially like the PAC Act law that we have right now, and if they need assistance in responding claims, we're there for them. Um, if they need assistance, um, more further assistance, we can refer them to the BSO who, uh, to advocate for them as well. I think need more assistance. Um, I just want to follow up there because everybody else before me has basically covered most of the uh, the PAC Act stuff that um, how to file a claim and what needs to be done. I believe that if you if you're going to file a claim, if you, if you want to file a claim or the PAC Act claim, anything like that, the first thing you might want to do is visit take a visit to uh, see your primary care provider and find out what kind of medical condition that you've been diagnosed with. And that will kind of make it easier for us, uh, the VSO, and us as uh, legal administrators, especially working for the, the VPA office, to, uh, to complete your, your claim and to find out what the documents, supporting documents that you might need or what additional forms 
that you need to complete to file your claim properly and and, and, and basically to make sure that you speed up the process. Because it's one thing you, you don't want to do is send a claim with the wrong information on it. Because a lot of veterans will come in and say, PACT Act is a, I want to file a PACT Act. Okay, PACT Act is not a disability, it's just a law. That's not a disability. That's why it's important to go see your primary care provider unless you actually know what you're suffering from. Then you can come in and let us know so we can help you with that. But, um, but yes, that's, the office is there to forward, provide assistance to all veterans uh, to file any claim. It doesn't have to be packed back and to answer any question and accept documents. And that's basically it. Uh, again, we're open from uh, 8 to uh, 4, Monday to Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Komasi. Thank you so much. Uh, very valuable information. Uh, definitely want people to complete their claim accurately and thoroughly and knowing the type of uh, disability or issue that someone is facing is, is critical to making sure that the uh, claim can be reviewed and properly assessed for approval. Um, so before we uh, get to the questions, I want to take one more survey question. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask if you have filed for PACT Act benefits, if you would please press one on your telephone keypad. Press two if the answer is no, but you plan to file before August 9th. Or press three if you uh, do not, if you have not filed for PACT Act benefits. Please press the number now. Thank you, Congressman, and uh, for all your special guests, a lot of great information this evening. And if you're joining us uh, via telephone for this interactive telephone town hall and you have a question for the Congressman or any of the special guests that are here with us tonight, simply press star three on your telephone keypad. If you're joining us online, you can just type your name and question right below the streaming player. And want to remind you, if you want to sign up to stay up to date with the Congressman's office and receive that, uh, that newsletter, that e-newsletter, simply press star six and we'll take down your email address and make sure that you get that viable information. We have questions uh, both on the phone and online this evening. Congressman, we're going to start with a, uh, one of our participants who are joining us online tonight, Sharon Berry, and I'll let you kind of direct uh, who you think might be best to answer this question. But Sharon's question is, why does it take so long for Agent Orange to be, Agent Orange to be approved? Uh, my husband has B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and we are still waiting to be heard by a judge. Well, first, thank you, Sharon, uh, for your question, and uh, we are sorry for your husband's diagnosis. I'm happy to have one of our panelists respond, but also to let you know that we are available uh, in my district office to be a resource and to open uh, a constituent um, case on your behalf and to try to, you know, work through the process to get an answer and try to reach a resolution. So if you haven't already done so, please uh, either stay on the line and we'll have someone get your information or call us back at 702 nine six three nine three six zero and someone from my staff can um work with you to to address that issue but is there anyone uh from our panel that would like to respond to sharon's question i'll take a shot at it michelle oh there's somebody <laughs> i'll let him go first mm. uh you sorry to me you yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You. Okay. So, uh, okay, my name is Kamif again. Um, I work for the Reno VA Regional Satellite Office in Las Vegas at the VA hospital. Um, the question is, you mentioned, you said that uh, a judge, correct? Is that, if that is the case, is that an, a, uh, an appeal case that you're referring to? First of all, I'm, I'm really sorry about what's going on with your family. And Kamisi, this is an online question, so we don't have a way to interact uh, with Sharon specifically. Okay. 
Uh, is there any way I can, uh, let me see, I, can't, I don't see the question in your mind, and on my. Yeah, I think what happens in this case is it's, a, it's an individual case, and rather than giving broad information, mm -hmm. I prefer to have mm -hmm. someone talk to, to Sharon directly. So we have her contact information. We'll put her in touch uh, with you guys and then try to work it out that way, okay? Uh, yes, can I give you my email address? Maybe you can send that information, and I will contact her tomorrow or Friday to find out what's going on, to let her know what's going on with that. that case, yeah, we'll we'll get that offline and put you in touch with her directly. Let, let's thank go you very to, much. Let's go to the caller. I believe it's Trisha from North Las Vegas. She has yes, a we have Trisha about online Alex. right now. Hi, Trisha. You're live with the congressman. Go right ahead. Thank you for holding. Hi, uh, my question is this. So my father passed away in 2015 from Hodgkin's non-Hodgkin's, has tons of paperwork um, from this stemming from Agent Orange. So after he passed away, it took a year for my mom to receive benefits. Um, just before my dad passed away, since 2012, he had been waiting for his disability. It got approved the month that he passed away at 100%. And so I'm just trying to find out, is this PAC stack, does my mom qualify to receive from that? Because I'm, I'm not familiar with the military lingo and exactly if this includes, if this payment, um, can she benefit from, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Hi, this is Lisa Masal. I can take this one. Um, so... When a veteran passes away, that compensation benefit terminates upon their death. Um, so if they had everything, it'd be accrued benefits. Did she, you know, hopefully received a retroactive payment for accrued benefits from the time that he submitted his claim to the time he passed away? And then after that, your mom should have received dependence indemnity compensation if she applied for it, and that was the cause of his death. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly. Hopefully, that sure. makes more information. I, yeah, I just I'm I'm not. She does receive a a check on the first of the month. Um, okay. But I don't know if that's if this is because I'm not in the military. I I have no idea. Every time I take her, they're they're like she's not eligible. But somebody agreed to see us next Tuesday, and they said to bring okay. the DD14 and everything down there. I just don't want her to if. For some reason, she does qualify for her for it to be expired because I do understand it expires next week to apply. Yeah, Correct. Just to clarify, but so just, just to clarify, oh. it doesn't expire. It it's a deadline to get retroactive pay for a year, but it doesn't mean you would be denied. If you are eligible, you will be able to get it in the future. And so it's not like it goes away. It's just we're trying to get people to meet the deadline to qualify for the one year of retroactive pay if you um, are eligible. Okay, correct. But I should I also want to clarify that um, non-Hodgkin's was not one of the presumptive conditions added to the PACT Act. That was one from a prior ruling. So DIC is very specific as far as how much the amount is. So she's already receiving it. She will not receive any additional monies unless she needed aid and attendance from a healthcare worker or was housebound. So when you meet with your veteran service officer, they will go over and they'll be able to look at the file and be able to see exactly what's in there, what she's getting, and if she is missing any benefits, they will definitely file for you. Okay, okay, I appreciate that. If you have a question this evening for the congressman or for any of our guests that are joining us uh, for this issue, the issues for veterans and for the PACT Act, simply press star three on your telephone keypad. And if you're joining us online, just type your name and question right below the streaming player. Uh, up next, uh, we have Lou from Mesquite, Nevada. Hi, Lou. Thank you so much for holding. Go right ahead. Thank you so much for accepting my call. Yeah, of course. Go ahead, look. This is Congressman Horsford. What's your question? I call initially, um, so you're aware, I'm 
80 years old. I've been in the VA system since January 1964. Uh, I have problems with hearing, so if I don't hear everything, excuse me. But uh, sometimes where I had to make appointments and I use a phone because I'm very limited. <clears throat> I only have a cell phone to try and get through to people, and I had trouble with that. So I had to use the phone. And my problem is it's like at an ongoing time. Every time it's 30, 45 minutes to wait for a live person, and I get frustrated and hang up and call again, and the same thing resolves that. I just don't understand why I couldn't. You know, I know all the VA people call on line uh, or, or call to make appointments, and they go through the same problem, but I just don't understand why I can't get a, a reasonable call back or to set up an appointment that's uh, suited for both of us. To Because uh, I do come from Mesquite to go to all my, all my uh, doctor's appointments and uh, – in Las Vegas, and that's the way it's been, but I, I just don't understand uh, why the uh, phone system is uh, not up to date in my mes estimation. Yep. Well, thank you very much, Lou, for that uh, feedback, and we will constantly be working with the VA to improve these types of efficiencies. It's good for me to hear that directly as your congressman, but also um, want to make sure you connect to my office. We actually do uh, office hours in Mesquite, specifically targeting our, our veterans so that you can connect to my office. Uh, but I will have my staff, uh, if you would stay on the line, they'll take your information and make sure we can get you scheduled with an appointment, okay? Primary appointment, I do go down to uh, Northeast Clinic for my annual, for uh, they, I did my blood work in Mesquite, and I'll be going down there on the 9th to see my primary doctor, and we'll go from there if there's any other thing I have to do to special for specialists or anything like that. Because as uh, you know, uh, the clock is running out, and I'm 80 years old, and I don't see me getting better. But I just want to keep my wits about me and try to be. Uh, up front as much as I can, and, and that's basically why I wanted to get on this call to see if that's the case. And uh, I, there yep. was another question. I don't know if you can address that. Well, you, your question was why is it so difficult to get through and to get an appointment? And what I want to assure you is that I will work with the VA to find ways to create more efficiencies for people. But specifically in your case, I want to help make sure that the appointment that you have, you know, that it, you don't have any complications or delays. As you said, you've been waiting, and we need to make sure that, that they uh, are responsive. So if you would stay on the line, I'll have my staff talk to you, and we'll get that set up and, and confirmed, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. And, Congressman, uh, if you don't mind, could you repeat your office number again? Uh, some folks have been asking uh, that didn't have a chance to get that down earlier. Yeah, the district office is 702-963-9360. Uh, we have a number of dedicated staff. Larry Hom does most of the uh, casework for our veterans, and so you'll talk to one of our staff members, and they'll make sure that uh, we, we try to resolve any questions and, and get people the help they deserve from the VA. All right, Thank you, let's Congress. go next to Clarence from North Las Vegas. Hi, Clarence. You're live with the Congressman. Go right ahead. Thank you for your patience. Hello, uh, Congressman Mahosman. How are you doing? I'm great, sir. How are you this evening? I'm doing all right, man. I, uh, um, I think you're doing a heck of a job here. A good job of, uh, of doing what you're doing. I just want to let you know to keep up the good work, man. And uh, Thank thanks you very for much. being that means a thanks, lot. thanks for being so concerned about about the veterans. I just wanted to know. I mean, um, I'm already a hundred percent PTS PTSD uh, Vietnam vet, and uh, I would like to know. I mean, I'm 
do I qualify or would it uh would it be uh be uh be a good good uh, good good reason for me to go down and see do I qualify for this pack tax? Because I, I got high, high, high potential and high blood and all that stuff. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it to our panel and I'll have them maybe answer the question. We definitely want to encourage everyone who believes that they have had some service-connected exposure to, um, you know, submit a claim. Uh, and then there's a review and eligibility process to determine. But it's always my view that it's better to submit than not to submit. But, but what do our panelists say? Hi, this, um, is this is Lisa. Dr. Rollins, I, I absolutely here. believe so. Oh, oh, sorry, we're talking over. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, go ahead, Doc. Um, yeah, so uh, Mr. Uh, Clarence from uh, North Las Vegas, thank you so much for your service. So yes, even though you have been uh, service connected 100% for the PTSD, I would definitely encourage you to file a claim related to the pack related to Agent Orange exposure and high blood pressure, because that is one of those conditions that has been added as a result of the PACT Act. Um, there are so even if you already 100% service connected, um, still file that claim under uh, under that under for underneath the PACT Act expansion. But again, if you do not do that before August 9th, uh, 2023, uh, there's the, the potential for the retroactive back dating of the uh, uh, payments will not be in, effect, in a effect. So definitely file a claim. High blood pressure is one of those presumptive conditions associated with Agent Orange. All right, Mr. Clarence, so you've got your answer. Go make sure you get this information in. Again, the deadline in order to get retroactive benefits is next Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you miss that deadline, you can still receive benefits beyond that date. That's just to try to get the back pay that you would otherwise be entitled to, okay? Congressman, our next question is uh, one of our participants that are joining us online, uh, Skip Shakely. And the question is, since the Camp Lejeune Water Act is part of the PACT Act, can you shed some light on why not one claim has been addressed in the year that the act has been signed into law? Great, thank you. Um, one of our panelists would they like to ask respond if he first? could re yeah if he could repeat that last part of the question yeah since the Camp Lejeune Water Act was part of the PACT Act uh, Skip's concern that uh, that not one claim has been addressed in the year that the act has been signed into law I don't know if that's the case but maybe you can address that um. So regarding the Camp Lejeune garrison exposure, those that is a um, entity that is they're very strict medical conditions that right now are associated for the that are considered the uh, conditions associated with the Camp Lejeune exposure, and there are certain time frames in which in which you had to have been at uh, the location for at least 30 days. Um, I cannot speak to whether or not any um, any claims have been addressed. If uh, Mr. Skip Shakely, if you would like to uh, provide your information to the Congressman office and we can take a further look at it here at the VA in Las Vegas, we definitely will assist you in that way. But I, I cannot, um, I would say if you haven't filed a claim, please do so. But again, please review the um, the criteria for filing those claims because if you do not if that person does not meet those specific criteria they may not be um, they may not receive the uh, benefits associated with that I do want to take this moment to say though each case and each claim that is filed with the VBA is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis so it's not a blanket yes it's not a blanket no and I, I, I do want to encourage everyone on this call who can hear um, who is listening 
that if you filed a claim prior to the signage of the signature of the PACT Act for uh, medical conditions, you must refile that claim. Um, we are uh, the VBA is not looking back at those denied claims. So even if the answer was no before August of 2022, the answer might be yes now. So please look back and file the claims. Thank you so much. Great answer to the question. Congressman, if you'd like, uh, we have the poll results from that second poll. Would you like me to read those for you? Sure, go ahead. Well, and the question was, have you filed for PACT Act benefits? 19% uh, uh, have actually filed for the PACT Act. 26% uh, said no, but they plan on doing that before August 9th, which again is approaching very quickly. Uh, but 55% have not yet um, filed uh, for the PACT Act. So uh, that's the results of, of our poll, and we appreciate everybody participating in that and all the calls that are coming in, both on the phone and online. And again, if you have a question, simply press star three or if you're joining us online, just type your name and question right below the streaming player. Uh, Daniel Means uh, from Las Vegas. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for holding. You're live with the Congressman and our special panel. Hi, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you, all the participants, and thank you, Congressman, for doing this. Uh, very important for all of us VA vets. You know, as you are aware, it's always hard to figure out which way to go with different directions with VA and try to get things done. Uh, but it, it seems to be getting a lot better in the last year or two. Uh, and I appreciate that very much, and I'm sure that's part of what you've done. So thank you, uh, Congressman. Um, I, I I was a firefighter in the United States Air Force. I played in the foam like we were a bunch of kids. We were told it wouldn't hurt us. Now we find out that it, it's very bad for us. It, it's very, very toxic. Unfortunately, I got cancer, uh, and, and we're not sure if it came from that or where it came from, but uh, nobody in my family has cancer. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going through a bunch of different things right now that VA is asking me to do, uh, and I'm doing them. Um, but the process is long and hard. Uh, you know, I'm I'm 70 years old, and they, you know, they got me chasing out to different doctors and different things. Um, you know, and, and I understand that, but uh, any help you guys can have. I, I don't know why I was not directed to go see my local Las Vegas VA. Uh, I'm dealing with the national VA. And, and they're very nice. They're very and very competent too, by the way, Congressman. Uh, I'm very impressed with the people that take the calls. Uh, but it, it is a 20-minute wait every time. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The, the, the gentleman was right. It's it's a it's a 20 to 25-minute wait on every phone call you make to them. Um, but I'm in I'm in the middle of the process, I guess. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how the process works. Nobody's ever really explained it to me. What I've got to do to you know to show and how it, how it ends up. So and when and, and when it ends up. Uh, but again, I want to thank you for doing this. This is very important to, to a lot of us here on, the, on this call, uh, and thank you. And, and I also told your guy that I, I'd like to contribute to your to your to your uh, reelection next year. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is a, this is an official call. We're not campaigning, but thank you for calling in, and thank you for your service. And I'm glad to know you're in process. And you know, thank you for sharing you know, the information. I do agree. We have very dedicated um, public servants who work at the VA. Uh, um, you know, it's a big agency, so it's not always perfect, but I know people who work extremely hard and are dedicated and really want to uh, support our veterans in getting their claims and their health care uh, approved and, and, and scheduled and provided uh, but when there are challenges or delays, we do want to hear about it so that we can work with them um, in my role as your representative and holding them accountable to do what we promise to do for our for our veterans. So thank you for sharing that. And, and I know we have a number of other veterans. I want to get to as many people as possible. So let's take our next call. Yes, sir. We have uh, Kevin Lang on the phone. Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for holding and joining us this evening. Great. How, how's everyone? I'm. I, I came a little bit late to the to the conference call, so I'm not sh entirely sure what the PACT Act is. However, I'm a, a Desert Storm veteran, and um, I've since. I don't know if you have obtained high blood pressure, and also I had a, a lot of um, a lot of dental work done while I was in the military, and I'm being told that I can't receive any benefits 
unless I'm 100% regarding dental work. Hello? Yeah, th- th- thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm going to ask one of our panel uh, members who spoke earlier. So you're indicating that um, you are what percentage disabled? I, I am not. I'm not. I'm no percentage disabled. Okay. And so but they're I, telling you that that in order to get the dental uh, work paid for, you have to be a hundred percent disabled, correct? Or hundred percent service related? Hi. Um, yes. yes this, this is Dr. Oh, go ahead, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lisa, you. Have, I got it last time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. so we get asked this question all the time in our office, all the time. So that is correct. You do have to be 100% service connected. Okay. I fall in the same boat. Um, you know, I, I have cancer from the burn pits. I've already been rated, but I, or had cancer, I should say, but I don't qualify for dental because I'm not at 100%. Um, right. The only way that you can get dental without being 100% is if you actually have a service-connected disability for dental for your jaw itself. Um, that's okay. that's the only way. Okay. Now, I, now I, I um, this might sound tedious, but but I had a lot of dental work done while I was in the military, and now it's it's finally falling apart basically. And I like to. I've been using the VA since since '95. I've had no mm-hmm. issues with the VA. I've, I've had a shoulder surgery. They've given me blood pressure medicine. They've given me diabetic medicine as well as um, cholesterol. I had a, a hernia. Yeah, this is for Miss here. Need... I'm sorry? Um, uh, I think he's. Mr. Uh, this, this is yeah. Uh, this is for Miss with the VPA. Okay. I, I highly suggest that you come and file a claim for your, for your teeth, for dental. Okay. Uh, it might be a great idea if you. Uh, is in one of the VSO and have them go through your medical records and see if um, that you have a case for a claim. Okay. Um, that's be my suggestion on that part because right now you have an idea, you think they have uh, been treated for some, um, several times with the, or in the military, there might be a case there. We don't know the answer to it until somebody comes through your medical records and the VSO whichever that is, uh, DAV, VFW, Nevada, they can comb through your records and see what that's, what's in there. That will okay. be my like, suggestion. Okay. Like I explained like I explained earlier, I'm kind of un- unfamiliar with the PAC Act. Is, yeah, is so, there a... sir, so the, yes. sir, the PAC Act just is a new law that was passed by Congress last year that allows for presum- presumptive eligibility based on certain types of exposures, particularly Agent Orange, burn pits, and other toxins. So that is why we're doing this call tonight specifically, because there's some new eligibility deadlines that are coming up for that program. But, you know, obviously there are broader benefits that are available to all veterans. And as the, um, you know, panelist explained, just submit the claim and that way they can do a complete review and give you a definitive answer rather than, you know, kind of guessing about it. And then I don't, if I don't you want, want to, to work through my, I'm sorry, I don't want to be redundant, but I don't know where to submit that claim. Could, could that yeah, be stated? So if you, yeah. If you would stay on the line, my office will connect you and we can provide you with the form. There's also a website that has been set up. It's Horsford dot house dot gov uh, forward slash pact act that's p a c t a c t that has all of the relevant information on the website but stay on the line and we'll have someone take your information okay. and connect you to the process there, there's a reason that i vote for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very it. much sir. all you. right what we're going to do we're going to do a, 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 a round of speed questions because we have a lot of questions and I do not want to leave people without getting answers. So I am going to ask the questions and I would like someone from the panel to just give very quick responses to the extent possible. So Deanna, uh, she's a wife of a retired military uh, veteran. She wants to know how to submit a claim 
for PACT Act benefits. Well, you can visit one. This is Comissy here from the uh, VPA. Uh, you can submit a claim. Come to one of the visit um, either the one of the DSO or come to a uh, property contract office here in Vegas at the main building, and we can file look through your paperwork and file a claim for you. Complete the form. Great. And the locations for that are on my website at horsford.house.gov forward slash PACT Act or call the office at 702-963-9360. Next, we're gonna to go to Ramon Allen. Uh, he, he has an uncle who was he was taken care of, who died previously. They had paperwork for survivor benefits, but didn't know what to do with it at the time. Should he apply uh, based on this uh, new PACT Act or other benefits? Okay, uh, can I yes. here? Yes. yes. Go ahead and bring the paperwork in. <laughs> I was, yes, turn your paperwork in, burial benefits. Uh, other benefits are only for dependents, survivors. So I think if maybe if one of you could explain the types of benefits. So if, a, if you've lost, if you are dependent, what are the types of benefits that might be eligible for someone other than just a payment that would still, you know, provide a benefit to a, a surviving dependent. Can you just explain that very quickly? Sure, so um, in addition to the burial allowance, um, again, and I like to clarify, it's not a reimbursement for what's been paid, it's an allowance based on different eligibility factors. Um, but then there's also dependence indemnity compensation, that is a monthly payment that is paid to surviving um, spouses or surviving dependents, dependent children. Um, it is not the same as the disability compensation that a veteran was receiving, uh, but there's that. And then if the surviving um, dependents do not qualify for dependents indemnity compensation because it was not a service-connected death, and they are a low income family member, then there's the potential for survivor's pension, which is also a monthly stipend based on income, very low income amount. Um, so I would definitely, again, I recommend reaching out to a veteran service officer so that they can look at the specifics of the case, look at the dependents and see exactly what the family members will qualify for. And they will, the VSOs will file the claim on behalf of the claimant or the veteran. So the veteran and the claimant does not have to go through the large abundance of paperwork to get a claim in and everything. They'll walk you through the whole process and get it submitted. Great, thank you so much. So several people are asking similar questions. And I have Calvin Wilson asking about a dependent mother who lost uh, their uh, father. Should they apply for the PACT Act benefits? The answer is yes. Um, Evia Louise uh, Kuntz uh, has, is asking a similar question, um, but you're also asking why is it taking so long to get uh, them even filed before your mother passed? Who's in charge to help move these claims? Um, so again, I want to encourage those of you who may have a claim already filed and it's been delayed to work with my office, we can look into the status and get a, a basically a, a status update and to determine if there's anything delaying uh, a decision or a review of your claim. Uh, Richard Roland Jacobs asked, would a, a asbestos exposure qualify under the PACT Act? Yes or no? No. Um it doesn't. It's not one of the uh, presumptive conditions associated uh, with an exposure. However, if you have medical conditions related to asbestos exposure, you may file a claim. Thank you, Roosevelt, Roosevelt Freeman asks: If you are 100% disabled currently, is there any benefit to apply for the PACT Act? Yes. 
there is benefit to apply for the PACT Act because even though you are 100% disabled currently, it may it does also allow for the uh, additional documentation should there be any additional changes in the future. So yes, you should still apply for the PACT Act um, for any medical conditions related to your exposures while active duty or any medical conditions tied to your active duty time. So Roosevelt, Mr. Freeman, yes, go and apply Sometimes the laws change and there may be a future benefit based on the information, but if you don't tell us that it's related to the PACT Act, we won't know. So go ahead and complete that. James from North Las Vegas is asking, does the PACT Act go back to 1972 or is it too late to file if he was exposed to Agent Orange when he was in the military in 1972? It, it won't be retroactively paid. Yes, that, oh. correct. <laughs> it's, if you have health conditions related to Agent Orange exposure, um, please re, please file a claim. If you file it before the ninth, you have the opportunity to potentially get 12 months of back pay. But you are never too late to file a claim uh, for any health or medical condition related to your time while you're in the military. So James, file because if you are de deemed eligible and if you do it before next Wednesday, meaning if you file that claim it, and it's reviewed, you can get that one year of ro retroactivity, but at a minimum, it can be reviewed for any future payments. So don't leave those benefits on the table. Uh, we also have a question from John asking whether kidney cancer is on the list. Um, he was exposed to Agent, Agent Orange. At this point in time, kidney cancer is not one of the presumptive conditions related to Agent Orange exposure. However, I still say file a claim um, because while it's not now, you never know what will happen in the future. And then also this would be a perfect opportunity for you to um, consider participation in the Agent Orange Registry if you have not already. This again helps to collect research um, and data information and it may help to uh, show the link between Agent Orange so exposure and kidney cancer if enough veterans are showing that type of response. Thank you. All right, we're going to do a few more to get through uh, before our time expires. Um, I know Mahalia Jessica asked uh, about uh, a widow filing a claim. The answer to that is yes. Uh, if you need more information for how to do that, please call my office at 702-963-9360 or visit the website that's been set up for this purpose at horsford.house.gov forward slash PACT Act, that's P-A-C-T-A-C-T. -T. All right, next we're going to Patricia, who's saying she's been trying to get her VA card, but she's been told that she doesn't qualify because of income, but it's her understanding that she should qualify as long as she was honorably discharged. Can someone give Patricia an answer uh, to her question? Well, uh, this is committee. Um, yes, she's not qualified because of the income, but she can file a claim and get the card that way. That's one way to. So if she get a better, uh, get a zero percent um, claim, uh, medical condition, then she can be able to get a, a a VA card. But as far as at this point, because she's trying to get a card using a uh, uh, without a benefit. Compensation benefits so is not going to basically you're going to deny it. Okay, that was a little hard to understand. I'm sorry, uh, at least it was for me. But you're saying that she mm -hmm. can get the card even though she has an income over the eligibility amount. She well, the only way, unfortunately, the way it works is that because if she has a higher amount of income, she's not going to be able to get the VA card. But if she can file a claim and she get a comp by some kind of percentage of that way, she can get she can get a VA card if she file a claim. Okay, so the process should be to start by filing a claim, determine if she yes. has eligibility that would go against that income, which would then 
make her eligible for the VA card. Yes, sir. So, uh, Congressman Horsford, um, for Ms. Bradley, she should visit the enrollment office at the v VA, and they can then determine uh, and assist her with enrollment, and that is all that's needed to get a card. Now, in order to get medical care, um, if her if she um, she may have to do a copay. She can get medical care at the VA. However, there may be a copay involved. So she should visit enrollment at a VA, which is at 6900 North Pecos Road, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89086. All right. Thank you. Um, I did want to take a couple of the online questions before we close. Uh, I, Douglas and McColl, um, I understand you are dealing with a very serious issue, dealing with a foreclosure um, based on uh, a loan being taken out uh, on your house, um, that you are 100% uh, disabled, uh, you and your wife. And so um, I would like to have someone from my office work with you and the Nevada State Attorney General to see what we can do to support uh, mediation around your issue. Um, so thank you for raising that question and, and uh, someone from my staff will take your information and follow up or please call us back at 702-963-9360. Um, again, I think we've answered the question for Clinton around 100%. Uh, what benefits can still come from the PACT Act? There are still benefits either now or potentially in the future so still complete that process um bill is asking about and i can't pronounce this cerberic dermatitis whether that is a presumptive condition he was in the gulf and saw many burn pits from aircraft carriers is that uh, something that is covered under the pact act So um, the seborrheic uh, dermatitis uh, is it is a um, is not right now on the list of conditions that are considered presumptive um, related to burn pit and airborne hazard exposures. Um, however, your what is um, something that is called and what they're doing is called a toxic exposure related activity activity or a Terra memo, and a, your ILER, which is your individual longitudinal longitudinal exposure report um, and those will those will have uh, what you were exposed to in the areas that you were and that can be used to help to develop your claim so I would still say file a claim and go through the process because there while right now it might not be a, um, it might not be a presumptive condition there's no guarantee there's no uh, saying that it might not happen in the future All right and that, it sounds like, is the theme of the evening, which is when in doubt, file a claim, because at least at a minimum, you are providing the information so that if in the future there is a change in benefits being extended or there's additional research that's being collected, this helps us as policymakers and the VA know what the needs are. And so I, I think consistently we've heard from the experts tonight that uh, everyone should file a claim uh, when they think that it's service connected. Um, I wanted to close uh, with Mr. William Grant Major from Perump. Uh, we'll go ahead and take your question uh, on online. We'll take it live. Are you there? Live. Are you there? Hello. Yep. Go ahead, William. Yep. Go ahead, William. Uh, yes, I. I have. <laughs> I have a couple items. One, the um, organization down there at the VA hospital that's supposed to help you, help vets, the file claims and things of that caliber. I have used it a couple times. The first time the the person that was trying to help me was very, very uh, helpful. Uh, I was able to file my claim uh, for an appeal. Uh, then I come back to file another one and uh, the staff that was trying to help me he says oh well I wasn't there I don't know and wouldn't help me at all I said okay so I filed it myself and 
that's where I've asked for your help, Mr. Harper. Um, I want to know how long it's going to take the Veterans Affairs to decide because they have admitted that they're, they have made an error in my case. Um, and it's been since, what, last year? Well, that's what we are well, here for. Are here for. Thank you thank for you, um, thank calling you. in. Um, so calling my in. staff has taken your information. We're going to follow up with your case and uh, work to reach a resolution. Uh, we have constituents, you know, covering uh, virtually every corner of Nevada and Pahrump and Mesquite, Tonopah, Hawthorne. A lot of our rural towns and communities deserve uh, to get uh, attention as well. So thank you uh, for raising that, and we look forward to you know working to reach a resolution and, and getting you a satisfactory answer. So thank you for calling in. That's what uh, the town hall is about tonight. I want to thank, uh, as we close, all of our speakers, Dr. Rollinson Mayer, uh, Mayner, excuse me, um, Lisa Masil uh, from the Veteran Advocacy Support Team. Uh, Dr. Rollinson Mayer uh, with the Veterans Health Administration and uh, Comisi uh, Baramo uh, with the Veteran Benefits Administration Office in Reno. Uh, also to Tim, our moderator, uh, and to all of you uh, for calling in and for joining us today. As a reminder, you can find a link to many of the resources that were discussed tonight uh, uh, on my website at horsford.house dot gov forward slash pact act that's p-a-c-t a-c-t and as always my office is available uh, to provide additional support uh, regarding veterans issues and other federal programs so you can reach us at 702-963-9360 again i want to thank everyone uh, for joining us um, and um, turn it back over to you, um, Tim, to close us out. Thank you, Congressman, and thanks everyone for joining us. And if we did not have a chance to answer your specific question tonight, you can stay online and leave a voicemail, and we will follow up. Or again, call 702 963 9360 during regular business hours. That does conclude today's event. Have a great night.